Thank you, Rita. All the way from Juneau tonight, right? Through the fog and uh, all of that. You may have noticed coming in this evening, uh, welcome and Merry Christmas, everyone. You may have noticed a little something different this evening. Farm animals in the front yard, that's unusual. And the excitement that you felt as you came in with the kids, they're about ready to give us a modern rendition of that age-old story. And we are privileged to be a part of it tonight. And what it reminds me of is how through the scriptures, God reminded us that he wanted to be our God, he wants to be our God, and he wants us to be his people. He said, I will live with them, I will walk with them, I will be their God, and they will be my people. And that's what we're celebrating tonight, the incarnation of God, Emmanuel, God with us. I invite you to pray with me. God, we thank you for this blessed evening, the celebration of your coming to be our God, to be our Lord, to be our Savior. God, we ask that you would bless this gathering and each one. Help the kids to, to do their very best and help us to be supportive of the proclamation of the good news. Thank you. Amen. And with that, I would invite you I invite you to join me as we share the word. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. I invite you as you're able to stand as we sing together, O come all ye faithful.
Friends, tonight is Christmas Eve, a night of wonder, excitement, mystery, and childlike fascination. For just a bit, let us all put on our imagination caps and consider what it may look like if Jesus was born in our modern world of comic books, in the world of superheroes. It looks like we've arrived just in time for an emergency meeting of the superhero squad. Let's listen in. Order, order. I call this meeting to order. I have some disturbing news. How long? There's a rumor going around that a new superhero is coming to Earth. Who does he think he is? We save the Earth. Yeah, that's our job. This superhero receives his power from the big G.O.D. They say he's God's own son. Holy Thunderations! God's son? The new superhero is coming to save the world from... Dun, dun, dun... Sin. Sin. Who is this sin? Never heard of him, but I would crush him way better than this new guy. Okay, okay, let's all calm down. Where is this new guy supposed to show up? Rumor has it, down in that little town of Bethlehem. Heavenly Church Choir, that's not far from here. The superhero squad quickly formed a plan. First, find out all they can about the new guy. What are his superpowers? What are his weaknesses? Second, head to Bethlehem. Search high and low to find him. Meanwhile, a young couple is slowly trudging their way to the city of Bethlehem. I'm so tired. My feet hurt. My back hurts. Joseph, can't we stop and get a room somewhere? I'm sorry, Mary. I didn't know you would tra be traveling this deep into the holiday season. Every hotel is booked. I know the angel told me not to be afraid, but Joseph, I'm really scared. This isn't how it's supposed to be. Breathe, Mary, breathe. God chose you to birth his son. We have to trust him, and I will be every step of the way. Trust me. This new superhero sure knows how to hide himself. Maybe that's his superpower. He transforms into his surroundings. He's not hiding under here. Great bungee bowler, be careful. Hey, maybe he is the rock. Maybe I should just ask somebody for help. We heard he is 
coming to save the world from an evil villain. And that's our job! Joseph! Sorry, gotta, gotta run. Good luck at finding the new superhero. Well, that's weird. We really need to find a place soon. Wow, it looks like that lady was ready to have her baby any minute. Did you see the look on the guy's face? Like, like a deer in headlights. My supersonic sense is telling me we're closing on him. Well, we didn't find him here. Better widen our search to those hills. Heavenly hacking boots, let's go. Meanwhile, Joseph, with a very tired and expectant Mary, continued to hunt for lodging. They stopped at the Radisson, then the Marriott, nothing. The Best Western and on to the Hilton. And lastly, the Holiday Inn, but not one room. But wait, it looks like the owner at the last place is leading the couple to the service shed out back. A shed? Really? Hey, it's better than nothing. Night, Night begins, begins to, to fall. fall. Shepherds on a nearby hillside are watching over their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, a great commotion fills the sky. A brilliant light, a heavenly voice. The shepherds are scared out of their wits. Suddenly, the atmosphere is filled with angels, all praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men, and on those who save the
As the last heavenly note faded away and the sky returned to its normal starry night, the superhero squad came upon the shepherds who were in a hubbub of excitement. Hey, hey, do you think these shepherds have already found the new superhero? What's all the hubbub all about? Didn't you hear? Our savior has come. Savior? Yes, he has come to save the world. Save the world? That's our job! Guys, guys, listen! He must be talking about the new superhero. Superhero? What's that? No, I'm talking about a baby boy. He is the Messiah, the Savior. The angel said we would find a baby wrapped in clothes lying in the manger. Great bouncing babies? Could it be him? Where did you say we could find him? Down in Bethlehem. We are on our way there now. Come with us. And so the superhero squad followed the shepherds down the hills and through the town. Guided by a bright shaft of starlight, they found the place. Quietly peering in, the superheroes were pulled into the scene by a powerful force. A force so great, not even the strongest superhero could withstand it. In bewildered amazement, they recognized the couple from earlier. There was the mother, completely worn out, yet with a look of wonder and peace on her face. The proud papa was fluffing up shredded paper for the baby's crude bed never once taking his eyes off the sleeping child. He took the newborn baby, wrapped him in a warm blanket, and wrapped him in the crap packing crate. Gone was the frantic look. Instead, determination and fierce love radiated from the man. Finally noticing the visitors, Mary and Joseph motioned for them to draw closer. Why do I feel weak in the knees? I sense he is much more than a superhero. Leaping like emotion. Look at his face. Love. Pure love. Is he the superhero we've been looking for? I would give my whole heart just to serve him. I must ask, is the rumor true? Is he truly God's own son? 
And as the baby drifted off to sleep, Mary and Joseph told the superhero squad their stories of angel visits, divine dreams, and miracles. Greetings, Mary. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. You will be with the child and give birth to a son, and you shall call him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High, for nothing is impossible with God. An angel of the Lord appeared in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. He, what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name, are to name him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. He is Emmanuel, God is with us. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Great God Almighty! But how is this little guy going to save the world? Does he even have a superpower? No offense, but he's pretty puny. Guys, have you even looked in his eyes? And Mary, not quite knowing how to answer their questions, repeated what the angel had said to her. Nothing is impossible with God. I will trust in him and his divine plans, whatever that may be. And as the sun crested on the horizon, a huddle of shepherds and superheroes sat in awe of the one who had come to, to save the world, this baby, Jesus, Jesus. And friends, that's just part of the story. Listen to God's divine plan of salvation. 1 Colossians 1, 15 through 20. Jesus is an image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible, whether thorns or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in all him things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself of all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but save the world through him.
Superhero Squad, Jesus Christ has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are, therefore, Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. Friends, Friends now, now is the time of God's God favor. Today is the day of salvation. And from that day on, the superheroes spread the news about what they had seen and heard. With glad rejoicing, they went out into distant islands, shining the light of Christ in the darkness, spreading love to those in need of hope, and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Didn't our Sunday school kids and youth do a terrific job in telling us the story? Thank you so much. In a moment, we're going to be passing the light of Christ, just as the kids reminded us that it is our job to go into all the world and preach the gospel proclaiming Christ, salvation through Christ, and faith in Him. And um, after that, the live nativity will be outside, and we invite you to just spend a few moments enjoying that uh, multi-sensory um, presentation. I sometimes wonder, what was God thinking when He used a cold, uh, dingy, dark animal shelter to bring about and enter into the world to become God among us. But in fact, it is that very idea that God wants to come into each one of our hearts to proclaim the salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. It is God who says to our dark, cold, smelly hearts at times, yes, to Jesus being born in your hearts and in my heart. And it is then that that we celebrate tonight. In a moment, we'll light the candles and pass. The kids have their own candles, and I invite you to partake. Jesus is the light of the world. 